Hello. Today we're going to finish up our discussion about secondary legal resources. Just a reminder, secondary legal resources are sources that we use to teach ourselves about primary law, but they're not law themselves. Primary law is essentially things like statutes, case law, and regulations. So the video part of this presentation, what you're watching right now, is going to focus on finding and using journal articles in your legal research. The in-class portion of the presentation will focus on using things like legal news, blogs, alerts, and RSS feeds to conduct legal research. So be prepared for a journal article research exercise the first thing when we get to class. Then I'll do a presentation on the other resources that I just talked about, and then hopefully we'll have time for a second research exercise on legal news and blogs later on in the class. And at the end of this class, we'll have wrapped up our discussion of secondary resources, and we'll be moving on to primary law research next class. Okay, so today I'm going to use a real Supreme Court case. It'll be decided later this year, so that I can demonstrate how we use journals to research a real legal issue. In a nutshell, in this full 2019 term, the Supreme Court's going to consider a trio of cases to determine whether Title VII protects LGBT employees. Two of the three plaintiffs claim discrimination based on sexual orientation, and the third claims discrimination based on transgender status. There's a circuit split in this area, with some circuits holding that discrimination on the basis of sex includes discrimination against gay and transgender employees, and other circuits finding that Title VII does not prescribe discriminations on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. The Supreme Court granted cert on April 23, 2019, and the Zarda case will be argued during the court's 2019 full term. So here's our first tool, and this is OneSearch. This is something here that we have available to us at the BLS library, and it's what they call an aggregated search tool. And all that means is that OneSearch is able to search through many different sources at one time. Contrast that to, say, like a Lexis or a Westlaw. Lexis can only search the resources that are on Lexis. Westlaw can only search the resources that are on Westlaw. Makes sense. One source searches through it all. Here's how this works. One search will search through every single item that we have here in the BLS library. So you can search for books, you can search for ebooks, you can search for articles, which is really helpful. So it's going to search journal articles available not only in the specialized legal databases that we have, but also in our social sciences databases and our health and medicine databases. Everything that we have, it's going to search at once. And it's going to return like a Google search thousands of results because it's searching through so many different databases, but we have some filters that you can use to narrow your results to get exactly what you want. And then I'll show you how to set up an account, and that's useful so that you can save your searches and save the documents that you pull so you don't have to recreate the wheel every time you go on to OneSearch. Let's take a quick look at how OneSearch works to search an actual legal issue. So again, here in a nutshell is the issue the Supreme Court will consider in the Zarda case whether the Title VII prohibition against employment discrimination because of sex encompasses discrimination based on an individual's sexual orientation. To search OneSearch, I can go right to the library homepage and enter my search terms. Given the issue that the Zarda case will consider, I'm going to enter the phrases Title VII and sexual orientation. By adding the slash P in between the phrases, I'm telling OneSearch that I want to find sources that contain both of these phrases, and I want the phrases to appear within a single paragraph. We'll talk more about terms and connectors or Boolean searching as the semester goes on. You can see that I've returned close to 8,000 sources with this search. I can use these filters on the left to limit my results by date, by type of source, just academic journal articles or just books or news, for example. And as I mentioned, it makes sense to set up an account. You just need your book law email and kind of follow through the template. And you can then save your searches and your documents and you can put them into folders. Okay, so that's one search. Now let's talk about some other ways that we search for legal periodicals. What is a legal periodical? Some of you are already very familiar with law reviews because you're actually on the staff of one of the four BLS law review journals. The other type of legal periodical is a professional law journal. While law reviews are focused mostly on the needs of legal scholars, professional law journals focus mostly on the needs of practicing lawyers. And there's our four journals that we have here at BLS, and as I mentioned, many of you are probably on the staff of these journals. So what's the characteristics of law review articles? And in knowing this, you'll also understand why they might be useful to you in doing legal research. 
The articles usually begin with a really good summary of the relevant doctrine and the literature in a particular area of law. These are invaluable when you're trying to familiarize yourself with a new area of law. I use them all the time when I was a practicing lawyer, particularly when I was a solo practitioner and I was always looking for a free way to learn a new area of the law. I was able to go pull law review articles and read like say the first 10 or 15 pages and learn an area of the law. So I'd read like three or four articles and then, as you know, articles in law journals also contain many footnotes. <laughs> Site checkers know this for sure. And so not only could I get an introduction and a very high quality introduction, I could also mine those articles, then look at the footnotes and find out what were the seminal cases, and I could go read the cases, what were the other law journal articles that were useful in this area of the law, and what statutes were there. I mean, I still had to go do my own primary law research, but these articles pointed me in the right direction. So save me a lot of time. So you may very well use them in practice as well. Professional law journals, I also use these all the time. What are the characteristics of a professional law journal? The articles are usually shorter than law reviews because they're, you know, lawyers don't have a lot of time to read anything. And they focus on practical issues. For example, an article might focus on how to draft a particular corporate document. Or they might tell you how a new statute is likely to affect the defense of a particular cause of action. They generally also provide fewer citations than law reviews because lawyers are not necessarily writing long treatises or articles themselves. They're practicing and putting documents out for clients. And they also usually emphasize current developments of interest to practicing lawyers. That's who they're directed for. They still might be something that you might look at now as a law student in doing legal research. It just depends on the research that you're looking at. All right, so how do you find legal periodical articles? How do you get to a journal article? It's very easy if you have the citation. If you have the citation, it gives you the title of the article and then the volume, the journal name that the article is appearing in, and the page number. So if you have all of that, you can just enter the name of the journal, not the name of the article, but the name of the journal in SARA, our library catalog, and it'll tell you right away if we have that journal available in print or electronically. You can also use the library's Find a Source tool, which is probably the better place to go if you have a journal title, and it'll tell you all the different databases that we have that journal in. So this is what it looks like. From the library homepage, select SARA Catalog. And then I go ahead and put in the name of this journal, Journal of Gender, Race, and Justice. This is a journal you might be interested in looking at if you were researching a Title VII sex-based discrimination issue like the Zarda case we'll consider. Here you can see Sarah has pulled up the journal. Yes, we do have access to the journal here at BLS. I just click on the link and the journal will open up and hide online. I can also use this Find a Source tool again from the library homepage. Put in the same journal that I did when we were using SARA, and then I get a listing of all of the different databases where I can find this journal. You can see that coverage is different from database to database. Legal Source has issues from 2012 on, while Hine has issues from 1997. Hine is always a good place to get journal articles because it tends to have the full run of the journal from its first issue to the present. Site checkers love this database because you can easily get PDF copies of journal articles. That way you can complete your site check without ever searching for a print version of the article. Click on any one of these blue links and you'll be taken right to the Journal of Gender, Race, and Justice in the database that you selected. You can see why this Find a Source tool is a great thing to know about and a real time saver. So if you don't have a citation, and this may happen, say you just want to find out about cruel and unusual punishment law, you can run a keyword search in Westlaw or Lexis. You can do the same thing in Google Scholar. You can use a journal index, which I'm going to talk a lot more about in a few minutes. Or you could use Hein Online and either look for a particular journal in Hein Online or do a keyword search in there as well. So here I am on Westlaw. I don't want to search the whole thing because I just want to search journal articles. So I go to Secondary Sources and then I select Law Reviews and Journals. And at that point, then I do my keyword search. The phrase Title Seven appearing within the same paragraph as the phrase sexual orientation. Now you can see I've got about 2,000 articles to work with. So to get that to be a little bit more manageable, I can use the filters on the left to narrow down on the exact articles that I'm interested in. I can tell Westlaw I'm only interested in articles after a certain date, for example. Another tool that I use all the time and really like is to search within these relevant results and put in another different phrase than I searched for the first time or a different word that was in my original search and that will narrow it down and hopefully make it even more relevant to what I'm looking for. And I can do this with different phrases and words to kind of narrow down this article to exactly the issue that I'm looking for. The final thing that I'll mention here is 
By default, these articles are sorted by relevance to the keyword terms that I put in, but I can also choose to sort by most frequently cited articles, bring those up to the top of the list, or by date, bring the most recent articles up to the top of the list. And then just some things to know why Westlaw is value added, and I didn't have access to this as a solo practitioner, but it would have been great. I can go to the Citing References tab, and Westlaw is going to tell me every single source that has cited to this article. Court cases, other law review articles, so if other law review articles have cited to this, then they're obviously newer than this one. So that's a great way to get additional resources. I can also use this table of authorities, which will provide a table for me with every single case that's been cited in this law review article. And there's always lots of cases cited in law review articles. And the value added that Lexis and Westlaw provide is they actually update the cases for you. And what this table of authorities will do is give you key cited versions of the cases so you can see whether they're still good law today. So that's a great resource to have and it's kind of all the work is done for you. The last thing I'll mention is that you can use this drop down to select which of your original terms you'd like to search for and find where they appear in the article. And over here are the things that almost all of these electronic legal research platforms allow you to do. You can link to the article, you can save it to a folder, you can download, you can make an alert which we'll talk about in the in-class portion of the lecture. So it's just good to know where all of these things are housed. On Lexis, the process is going to be essentially the same as it was on Westlaw. From the landing page, I'm going to select Secondary Materials, Law Reviews and Journals, and then here's my results list. I ran my keyword search, the same search that I did on Westlaw. I can use the filters on the left and this Search Within Results feature to get fewer articles to look through, but they'll be more highly relevant. I can sort just as I could on Westlaw by date, by relevance, by most cited. And I'm looking at an article like Wes, there's a number of different things I can do that are value added from just looking at an article that I could find maybe at the journal publisher's website. All of these things that you can do on the legal research platforms, I can save it, I can send it to somebody else by email, I can send a link, I can navigate to my search term. If I want to find newer articles, I shepherdize the article that I'm looking at. And once I do that, I see everything that's cited to my article. Cases, other law reviews, so obviously if they're citing to and they're going to be newer articles. I also have the option of creating that table of authorities that I did on West and that will give me a list of all the cases that are cited in my article and they will have been shepherdized for me so I can see if they're still good law today. So here I am in Google Scholar. Make sure you're on Google Scholar and not just Google and I'm going to run that same keyword search again and what Google Scholar does is it indexes articles. So it doesn't necessarily provide you with access to the article, but it gives you biographical information about it so that you know that there's an article that exists and it tells you where in the world you can find it. So if you're here at BLS, it's showing you right there where in the world you can find it. One of the places is Hein Online. And since you're here at BLS and you have access to Hein Online, you can just click on the title of the article. You can see it's a clickable link and it'll take you right to the article. Sometimes these links don't work, so you'll get to a journal database where it'll say you have to pay to read the article. Don't ever do that. Come to us at the reference desk. We can usually find it for you, and if we can't find it, we can borrow it for you through Interlibrary Loan. Anyway, back to Hein Online. Hein Online is a great resource when you're looking for journal articles. Here's some of the features. So you can jump, if you're doing a site check, to a particular page. I can download the article in PDF, which is also great if I'm doing a site check. And then if I want to do a keyword search to find out where the author of the article discusses the concept of sexual orientation discrimination, I just click on the magnifying glass, enter my search terms, and I'll be taken to those pages. And then finally, if I want to get citation information, I click here, and there's the Blue Book site. So just a bit more about Hein, because it's such a great resource when you're searching for journal articles. You can get to Hein right from our home page using the quick links, and there it is. And then once you're at the Hein landing page, you can do keyword searches, you can drill your way down by going to, into this law journal article, or, and here's what I think is really helpful, if you have a particular site, like if you're doing a site check and you have something like 45 Harvard Law Review 111, then you can select the citation navigator and that'll take you right to this template where you just enter the volume, the abbreviation for the journal like Harv Law Rev and the page number and it'll open it up right there in the page and you can do your site check. 
Okay, so that's pretty much it for finding articles. Now we're just going to talk a few minutes about legal periodical indexes, something that you're probably not as familiar with. And in short, legal periodical indexes are nothing more than a tool that legal scholars use to find journal articles. So they're not really a source themselves, but they're a way to find journal articles. So what are they exactly? They're basically a database that includes biographical information about an article. So they include not the full text of the article itself, but the author, the article, title, the journal title, and because they're only including this limited information in their content, they can include more articles than a full text database like Westlaw or Lexis or Hunt Online. So why is that good? The reason why is because if you only have this little bit of information, you can just search and get fewer results but more highly relevant results. And the way this works is, in addition to the biographical information, each article is going to be assigned a controlled vocabulary subject heading. And the way to think about that, rather than going through the painful process of calling something a controlled vocabulary subject heading, it's a hashtag. So if I'm looking for something on Twitter or any of these social networking sites, there's a way that people talk about it. There's a way that people who are sharing discussion about it talk about a particular issue. So let's say I'm on Twitter and I want to see what everybody's saying about Donald Trump. I input hashtag Trump and all of the tweets discussing Donald Trump will come up. Trump is the hashtag or the controlled vocabulary subject heading for all things related to Trump. If I'm in a periodical index, I find one good article and then I use the hashtags or subject headings assigned to that article to find more good articles. Examples of what we've been talking about today might be Title VII, Sexual Orientation, On the Basis of Sex, Sex-Based Discrimination, LGBTQ Discrimination, or some combination of any or all of these tags. And that's what I can do when I go to a legal periodical index. Instead of doing a hashtag, I would put in sexual orientation discrimination as a controlled vocabulary subject heading. And I'm going to pull up all the articles that have to do with that. Whether they actually use my exact keyword terms or not, a thinking person has read the article and has signed that and said this is what this article is about. So if you find one good article, you can mine it. So go ahead and look at the article and see, well, what subject headings has this article been assigned? Click on that, it appears as a clickable link, and all the relevant articles will automatically appear. It's the same idea as a hashtag. If you click on the hashtag in Twitter, all of the relevant tweets are going to appear. It's the same thing in using a periodical or any other kind of index. So why would you do that rather than Westlaw and Lexis? Maybe you would do both. They're kind of a different process for searching. Westlaw and Lexis search the full text of the article. It might be something that was spoken about in passing on page 95 of a 105-page article. The indexes are only searching the subject headings or the hashtags, so they're going to return more highly relevant articles. You're always going to get fewer, but they're hopefully going to be more highly relevant. And it does seem to work. I might do both if I were searching, so catch them one way or catch them the other. It's good to know about this, though. So. Indexes are also available in print, but some things I like in print better, some things I like electronic. This is definitely one thing that I would use electronic. And the big advantage that electronic indexes have, even though they don't provide the full text of the article in your search, they have links to them, to some of them. Not every journal article that's indexed, you can necessarily get the full text, but some of them you can. So that's great. If you see an article you like, looks like it's going to be interesting because of the subject headings, you might be able to click on it and be sent right out to the article. There's two main legal periodical indexes. One is by Yale, a publisher, Legal Track, and one is by EBSCO, another legal publisher, and that one's Legal Source. So from the library homepage, the easiest way to do this is to go to our databases by subject, and this is good to know about anyway because it has all our databases and then a little description of them. We have them A to Z, and then we also have them by subject area. So here you'll see we have a whole subject area of just periodical and periodical index databases. So anytime you're looking for articles on anything, this is a good place to go. And it shows you all of these various different databases that we have, and we'll be talking about some of them as we go along here. This one's the current index to legal periodicals, not legal source or legal track. And this is just like it sounds, the index that only includes articles that are less than six months old. So if you were writing an article or wanted to do a preemption check, this would be a good place to start to find the hot topics. Scroll down a bit and you can get to legal source, which we just talked about, and legal track. Legal Track provides indexing for more than 1,200 journals and it provides links to more than 200 titles in full text. 
Here's the Legal Track landing page. I would get here by clicking on that link that I showed you in our databases by subject list. I can choose to search by keyword like I would on Lexis or Westlaw. I can also choose to search by subject or to search a single journal. Here's a unique feature of Legal Track that I really like. Here I'm going to select Topic Finder. Now I'll search for the topic Title VII Sexual Orientation. Legal Track then gives me a wheel with all sorts of subtopics related to my topic of sexual orientation discrimination. There's many relevant subtopics that I could click on to get articles, but here I choose Gays, Employment Discrimination, Sex Discrimination, Workplace. Over to the right, you can see that Legal Track is giving me five articles on that subtopic. This one looks right on point with the Zarda case. Notice, while there are fewer articles than you might find on Westlaw or Lexis, the articles are all highly relevant. So that's a win-win situation. You have fewer articles to go through, but the ones that you have are of high quality and hopefully are all going to be helpful and relevant to your research. Legal Source works pretty much the same way. It's also got access to thousands of journals, and it also has included within Legal Source is this index that the Legal Periodicals Retrospective, where you can search for journal articles as old as 1908. So here I am at the landing page. I'm going to choose databases, and I can either just search Legal Source alone, or I could search the Index of Legal Periodicals Retrospective alone, or I could click on all of these and search them all if I wanted to do a really broad-based search. I enter Title VII in the search field, and Legal Source suggests a bunch of subject headings, including Title VII LGBT, so I select that one. And you'll see we've got a list of relevant articles just like we returned on Legal Track. I can click here to get a full PDF copy of the article, which is great if I'm doing a site check. If there doesn't happen to be a full text link, I can use this link resolver, and this will take me to a list of our databases that contain this journal. Make sure that you select Hine Online if you want to get a PDF copy of the article. All right, so moving on from legal articles, sometimes when you're doing a note or even as a practicing lawyer, it's not just legal articles that you need to read. I was a health lawyer, so I had to read a lot of medicine and reimbursement type articles. So we also have some databases here for those kind of resources. These indexes are pretty much the same thing as the legal indexes, but they're more focused on multidisciplinary resources. So let's spend a minute talking about finding non-legal journal articles. Some of the good databases we have here, if you're looking for that, are Academic Search Premier, which is a multidisciplinary database. There's also ProQuest, which is a database of 50 different databases. You can search one or all of them, almost 20,000 journals in there. JSTOR is a good resource. It has both legal and non-legal journal articles, mostly of a scholarly nature. SSRN is an interesting database. It's open source. People just upload either published articles or sometimes even working papers. So they're looking for comments from other scholars. So it's a good way to find something that's brand new. And finally, you can always go to the journal's website to see if you can download articles directly. I always had good luck with this when I was a solo practitioner. Most law reviews do make at least some of their issues freely available on the internet. Of course, this is only useful if you have a particular article already in mind, but that's why it's good to know how to use Google Scholar to find the articles in the first place. And that's what I did, is I would go to Google Scholar, do a keyword search, find an article, and then go to the journal's website and see if I could get my hands on the article and then teach myself yet another new area of the law. Okay, so here we are going back to the library homepage and selecting databases by subject. And now we're going to look at the non-legal journal databases. So there's Academic Search Premier. Go scroll down a bit. There's JSTOR. There's ProQuest. There's SSRN. And here's Medline, which is the big medicine database, actually run by the National Library of Medicine, where you could find articles written by physicians, nurses, dentists, vets, etc. I used to read those articles all the time as a health lawyer. All right, so that's about it. That's the end of our discussion of finding journal articles, both legal and non-legal. As I mentioned, right away in class, we'll be doing a legal research exercise, and you're going to use the resources that I presented in this video lecture to go ahead and do some research and you can see if you can answer the questions in the exercise and formulate some advice for your client. Please make sure you take the week three quiz before you go and submit your results, and I look forward to seeing you all in class.